And now for part six of my interview with CNN foreign affairs correspondent Jill Doherty. If the president is not successful on health care, do you think that hurts him in terms of foreign policy? Absolutely. In fact, I was talking with a diplomat just exactly about that the other day, who went to President Obama's speech on health care, and, and we asked him, what, you know, what are you going to that for specifically? And he said, well, I'm not really interested in health care, but I am interested in whether he is powerful or weak. And I want to see the body language. I want to see, he said, how people in that hall of course, Capitol Hill, react to him because it will have an influence on how he deals with foreign policy. And I think it's true. If he is perceived as being weak domestically, I think that it can carry over because that internationally, because that is a big priority. If he can't get that done, it diminishes his image of being a powerful leader. And what does the president do about Afghanistan? It appears that he's between a rock and a hard place. How is he going to basically appease a liberal and even moderate wing of the Democratic Party who clearly does not want to commit more troops? And yet, if he doesn't commit more troops, the initial reports say that it's been a failure, the mission in Afghanistan. So what, what is the president to do? <laughs> well, I'm not his advisor, so <laughs> uh, it's tough. You know, do you increase the number of troops? Have more people die? Do you accomplish your goals? That's what he's looking at right now. What exactly do you want to do? His goal, apparently, is to destroy Al Qaeda. And the way you destroy Al Qaeda is to deprive them of a place to flourish. So you keep Afghanistan as a no go zone for the Taliban, for, uh, for Al Qaeda. But the Al Qaeda is in Pakistan. So it t seems to me there are two things. Do you put all of your eggs you know, in that basket of full court press in Afghanistan, or do you have a less, less of a role there and go after, specifically after Al Qaeda, where it would really hurt them, meaning try to get them in Pakistan or other areas where they are. So speaking of al-Qaeda, one of the things that I have noticed, and it's very disconcerting, is here in the United States, and particularly in New York and in lower Manhattan, where I live, it seems as if people have moved beyond, to one extent, the risks that were posed after 9-11. Certainly right after 9-11, people were very concerned about security. Now here we are in 2009, and people seem to have put it to some extent behind them. Are you seeing that same kind of reaction abroad, where people say, well, there hasn't been a major attack in the United States since then? People may not be as concerned because they haven't seen these attacks. But if you talk to people who really know what is going on in the world, there is high concern about terrorists getting their hands on nuclear materials. It is very frightening to think about that. But that is one of the, the key issues that people are grappling with right now. Either a nuclear bomb, which wouldn't be that easy, or just nuclear material, a dirty bomb. And that, I think, is the very scary thing. Because when you have countries, they tend not to take irrational action. When you have individuals who are driven by ideology and their belief that only they know the truth. It's very, very dangerous mentality. So are you concerned that Americans have become too complacent? I mean, in so many different polls, when people are polled about the issues that they care most about, it's certainly the economy is always ranking number one. And other issues in terms of foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis Iran and other countries seems to fall more to the bottom. But it's natural, isn't it? I mean, I don't think that people today walk around thinking that there might be an attack. But remember just a few weeks ago when there was that um, what was it? Oh, the plane that flew over a Manhattan and took pictures. Right. And people got We're, emotionally very right. affected by that. Right. So it's under the surface. But I think people have difficulty thinking, you know, what do we do to get them? How, what do we do to stop them? And is Afghanistan the place that we should try to do that? And that's going to be a problem because there is war fatigue. It's a problem for Obama at this point, that Americans have fatigue over fighting a war. 
I want to talk for a minute about Michelle Obama and her role, because clearly she's carved out a very different niche for herself than I, both Laura Bush and Hillary Clinton, two women who went all over the world traveling for women's rights and children's rights. It seems as if Michelle Obama, at least for now, is very interested in what she calls the role of mom in chief. What do you think that means for women? On the surface, you could say, oh, well, she's just, you know, playing the traditional role. But I don't think that she is. I mean, I, my personal opinion is that it's time for Americans to look at their families and look at their children and, and realize that kids need to be educated and raised and need to be paid attention to. So I think that there is value in looking at children and looking at your responsibility and the possibilities of being a really good parent. It's, a, it's an important message, so I wouldn't diminish it yet. And it's early. She may f refine that. She may go internationally. But um, the, I think there's something in American society right now which says we have to get back to basics. Maybe yep. it's the economy. And getting back to basics means families. And also it's a choice of feminism. Feminism was all about having a choice, so she's decided to exercise her choice to be a mom. Right. And for those who don't, <laughs> they can concentrate on other kids. But I do, I do think that, you know, education, if, if I were president, the one thing I would concentrate on would be education. Because I'll tell you, Julie, my experience from being abroad is that in every country out there, in India, in China, I saw it in China because I lived in Hong Kong, they are educating their kids. The, the parents are working three jobs in 24 hours to put their kids through college and get them a really good education. And sometimes here, I think we don't really value that. Some people do, but a lot of people don't. And our dropout rate is atrocious. So how is the United States really going to compete? The other countries are going to eat the United States lunch if people don't really get educated. Well, Jill, thank you so much for being here on Give and Take. Thank you, Julie. I appreciate it. It's great.